Welcome to some of the most exciting motocross racing you'll see anywhere at any time. It's a look back at the 1992 AMA Grand National Championship Motocross Series. We'll begin our coverage where it all began in March of 1992. Gatorback Raceway, Gainesville, Florida. The opening round of the 125 CC National Championship Series. Let's start with a look at some of the contenders they expected to do well in the series. First up, Team Suzuki's Guy Cooper. A former 125cc national champion, he won that honor in 1990. From Stillwater, Oklahoma, Cooper is one of the most popular riders ever to ride the sport of motocross. Next up, Team Kawasaki's Mike LaRocco. He's never won a national championship, has three 125 national wins. He's one of the favorites to win this crown. Yamaha's top entry, Jeff Emig from Grand Terrace, California. AMA amateur national champion. He's looking for his first ever national victory. Here's another Team Suzuki rider expected to do well. He's campaigned the 250cc series and won nationals there, but never in the 125 class. That's Larry Ward. Now let's listen to who the riders think will be tough in the 125 class. Uh, the main competition's Brian Swink. Uh, he seems to be really going good, all the testing and stuff. And um, Mike LaRocco did good last year, but this year, riding in practice, his bike, his bike doesn't seem as fast as Suzuki's. So That's Cooper's opinion. Mike LaRocco would not agree. Uh, you, know, you know, we got a real good running bike, so, uh, you know, hopefully there won't be any difference at all. You know, hopefully I can run up there in front and, you know, stay up there. Preseason picks would have to go to LaRocco and Cooper. Let's go to the first moto, Gainesville, Florida, the first race of the season, and see how it shakes down. Fastest rider out of the gate is the huge field of 40 riders headed toward corner number one. Was Brian Tishner from nearby Palm Harbor, Florida, aboard a tough racing Suzuki. He was followed by Cooper, then Mike LaRocco. Cooper wasted no time in going after Tishner. Mike LaRocco, meanwhile, in the number three position, was studying the lines of both riders. Both LaRocco and Cooper got around Ron Tishner, then they waged their own battle for the number one position. LaRocco would make a pass attempt, Cooper would fend him off, Tishner holding on to the number three slot, still in it, and waiting for one of those two riders to make a mistake so that he could pounce. Here's another look at that pass attempt. Mike LaRocco went to the outside of Cooper. That set Cooper up for the good line, the inside line after that double jump to hold on to the number one position. Now watch how close Ron Tishner is to that pair of riders. He's just hanging tough, looking for some running room. He almost found it there, but LaRocco held on to the number two position. That's the way moto number one went. The two riders out front hounding each other. Their old rivals, Guy Cooper, at 30 years of age, is the veteran of the 125cc class. Mike LaRocco, one of the younger riders, coming up looking for stardom. Cooper, a 125cc champion just one year ago, hoping to regain those honors, but here comes Mike LaRocco, says, I'm not impressed with those credentials. It only matters what happens here in 1992. He made the pass to take over the number one position that shoved Cooper back to second slot, and it was still Ron Tischner holding tough in third. Now, Mike LaRocco's hold on that number one position is going to be short-lived. Watch the pass that Cooper makes on LaRocco. LaRocco tries to head him off, but Cooper had the drive. He made the pass while LaRocco sits back and wonders what happened. Now we're headed for the white flag in the last lap, and watch this. Two riders drop into that gully. Only one comes out. That's Mike LaRocco. Last lap, Guy Cooper crashed, throwing the number one spot away. He would get up unharmed and would finish in the number three position. So LaRocco wins it, followed by Tishner, Cooper, Lusk, and McGrath. Let's take a look at that forced pass from moto number one while I tell you that in the second moto, Doug Henry did the winning. Mike LaRocco was second. Guy Cooper was third. Fourth place went to Brian Swink, with Ron Tishner rounding out the top five. She says, what's it mean? Well, I'll tell you. In the point standings, it puts LaRocco on top. Cooper second, Tishner third, Henry fourth, and Jeremy McGrath in fifth place that's after one round of the 125 cc national championship series 10 more to go and we'll go to round two in southwick massachusetts motocross 338 is the name of the park first moto action the lone rider way out front he has it all under control as guy cooper or does he cooper gets a little bit sideways he kept the power on unfortunately that kind of drilled him face first 
into the ground. They call that taking a soil sample. Let's go back and take another look at Guy Cooper from Stillwater, Oklahoma in action. Comes off that jump a little bit sideways. Lost all control of the motorcycle and limps back to his bike. Cooper not a happy camper at that point. He would be passed by several riders and in that moto would ultimately finish in the number uh, six position. We'll pick up the action in the second moto. Let me tell you quickly, though, that Jeremy McGrath was the winner of the opening moto, followed by Doug Henry. Ron Chesney was third. Larry Ward was fourth. Here in moto number two is the field heads for the first couple of corners to sort themselves out. Note the condition of the track. Very rough. It's choppy. The lines change on almost every lap and in virtually every corner. A very soft, sandy condition. It's noted as being one of the toughest racetracks in the United States. Notice, too, the elevation changes. That's Larry Ward, rider number 10, holding down the number one position. He's followed closely by Mike LaRocco, rider number seven. You had just a quick glimpse of the rider in third. That was Ron Tishner. At each stop on the national championship circuit, as we watch the action between Larry Ward and Mike LaRocco in the number two slot, there are two motos or individual races. In each moto, riders are awarded points according to the way they finish. The rider that finishes in the number one position gets 25. The rider that finishes second would be 22 points. And in third place, 20. Fourth place gets 18. Fifth place gets 16. And from that point on, it drops in one-point increments. The points from both motos or races are totaled together. The rider with the highest number of points then becomes the day's overall winner. There are no extra points awarded for that honor. However, that's the way the factory and the clothing suppliers pay the contingencies to the rider. And as the season progresses, the points earned at individual race outings, uh, combining those two motos again, are the points that determine the national champion. And right now, Larry Ward, followed by Mike LaRocco and Ron Tishner, are looking for their share. LaRocco went wide. Tishner makes the pass in that soft sand, and he takes over the number two position. Sets his sight now on Larry Ward, who has been error-free in this, the second moto in Southwick, Massachusetts. We'll go back and take a look at that pass and watch how the soft sand comes into play. LaRocco gets just a little bit out of his groove. No way that he can pull it back. The sand carried him to the outside of that big sweeping high bank berm. And uh, Ron Tishner was able to take advantage, use the good line to cut to the inside. He takes over the number two position. Tishner and Larry Ward, both former factory riders for Team Suzuki. Larry Ward in 1992, receiving some assistance from Suzuki. It's a support type program, not a full factory ride, close to it. And Ron Tishner finding a home with tough racing. Toward the end of moto number two, Mike LaRocco regained the number two position. That dropped Tishner back to third. Here's the way the overall results look. Ward, Tishner, Henry, McGrath, and LaRocco. That's after combining the points for both motos. And after two rounds of the 125cc series, the point standings look like this. LaRocco, Tishner, Henry, McGrath, Cooper, and Emig tied for fifth. Let's go to round three. The highest point. Mount Morris, Pennsylvania is on top of that truck. The umbrellas are out. It's raining. That means mud and rider vision problems. Well, we have our uh, electronic film system here, and what it is, is it's a uh, time system, and you have 32 passes of clear vision. As you can see, the mud on the uh, film right here, all you do is you press this button here, and it automatically clears it, and it gives you a uh, clear vision. Today, a guy without, without uh, good vision is in last place. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Viva. In the first moto, the rider apparently with the best vision was Mike LaRocco. He took the win, followed by Guy Cooper, then Ron Tishner turning in another fine ride, finishing third. Now watch what happens in the first corner to rider number 15, Brian Swink. Finished fifth in the first moto. He'll not make it that high in moto number two. Early going, it was Guy Cooper out front. Larry Ward running second, Ron Tishner third. In fourth place was Mike LaRocco. Now LaRocco again, let us point out, was the winner of moto number one. He likes this Mount Morris racetrack. He likes the mud. He says the tougher it is, the better I do. Here he goes to the inside of Ron Tishner. He takes Tishner's measure. And now Mike LaRocco all of a sudden in the number three position. Guy Cooper again having problems for the third consecutive week while leading a moto. Guy Cooper did a face plant in that soft Mount Morris mud and dropped back from the number one position. 
Now here's Larry Ward who is leading rider number 10 and here comes LaRocco. LaRocco goes to the inside. Ward slammed the door, held him off on that pass attempt. Now watch these two riders go at it. They'll hammer each other and this very slippery Mount Morris racetrack. Larry Ward, rider number 10 on the yellow Suzuki is in the high line. He takes a look at where LaRocco is. Now watch this move. LaRocco had it set up. He tries a block pass. Ward saw it coming. He got to the inside again, but had lost all of his momentum. He was able to actually cut underneath LaRocco. His intention was to gas it and regain that number one spot, but not enough momentum on this slippery track. So LaRocco takes over the number one position. He had already won moto number one. He's going to go on and win moto number two. We're looking for Guy Cooper, rider number five. He was the early leader, and Cooper, who really liked to ride mud fell but look at he has rebounded and is actually catching the front two riders guy cooper holding third but here he comes he pulls alongside larry ward and he took the measure of ward to take over the number two slot for guy cooper a typical ride lead it crash get back into the ball game Cooper would finish second in the moto. Ron Tister would take a number four position, while Larry Ward would hang on to finish third. Fifth place would go to Jeremy McGrath. The finish line is coming up. That's how close Cooper was to Mike LaRocco at the checkered flag. The overall win goes to LaRocco, then Cooper, Tister, Ward, and Jeremy McGrath. So with three rounds of 11 down, let's take a look at the leaderboard in the championship point standing. With 135, LaRocco is on top. Tishner, a privateer, has moved into second, followed by Henry, Jeremy McGrath, and Guy Cooper. From Pennsylvania, the series moved west to Sacramento, California. Hangtown, USA, round four of the 125cc National Championship Series. Action in the first moto saw the emergence of two rather unlikely riders. Not unlikely because of lack of talent, but unlikely because rider number eight, Jeff Hemming, on the right side of your screen, had done absolutely nothing at all so far in the season. And the rider on the left of your screen from nearby Pollock Pines, California, Steve Lampson, is riding his first national event after recovering from a broken leg. Steve Lampson took the win, followed by Guy Cooper. Jeff Emig finished in the number three position. Ryan Hughes fourth. And rounding out the top five was Jeremy McGrath. Mike LaRocco turned in a sixth-place performance. The top riders managed to avoid that altercation in the second moto. Jeff Emig led him out of the first corner. It was Mike LaRocco running second. Third place, the property of Ron Tishner. Tishner, who was easily the top privateer in the series, did not fare well in moto number one. He finished eighth. And in the second moto, although running third when we last saw him, he would drop back to the number 10 position. Let's turn our attention to the battle that developed in the front runner slot. Out front, it's Jeff Emig, rider number eight out of Highland, California. Running into number two position is Mike LaRocco. Now, the interesting thing here is, although Emig had been touted at the season opener to being one of the top riders in this 125cc class, he had been having problems. His best finish is to date, a sixth overall in the season opener. He followed that with a seventh and then an 11th overall. So he had not been among the front runners. Here he's leading, though, moto number two at Sacramento, California, round number four. Right behind comes Mike LaRocco and the rider in the number three slot that we keep getting glances of every now and then is Steve Lampson out of Pollock Pines, California. He was the winner of the opening moto. So throughout moto number two, this trio of riders showed the rest of the field the short way around this racetrack. Now remember the name of Jeff Emig. You're going to hear a lot more about him as this season progresses. And also Mike LaRocco, who has been just dynamite thus far in the series and holding a rather commanding points lead as we entered into round four here at Sacramento. We're watching action from the second moto. First moto was won by Steve Lampson, currently running in the number three position. Emig out front finished second in that moto. And should he win, should he take the measure of LaRocco here, he would be the overall winner of the day. It's not going to happen. LaRocco got a good drive on the inside, down that short straightaway with a jump in the middle of it. He overalls Emmett, and he takes over the number one position. So out front now, out of South Bend, Indiana, aboard the Team Kawasaki rider number seven motorcycle is Mike LaRocco. He's followed by Emig. This is the best by far that Emig has ridden all season long. And in third, it's still Steve Lampson coming off that broken leg. 
Now here, rider number 15 being lapped by LaRocco. He had his trouble today. That was Brian Swink. Here LaRocco heads for the checkered flag. He takes moto number two, but all that gives him is third overall for the day as Steve Lampson finishes in the number one position when you total the points for the two motos. We caught up with Lampson back in the pits. Here's what he had to say. I felt good. Um, I haven't rode, raced the big race in like five, almost five months now, so um, I was a little nervous coming in here, and I knew I was, my speed was up, and you know, I've been riding some fast guys during the week, and um, I think I had my speed up, and I just came out here and did my best, and came out good. Came out good indeed. Welcome back, Steve Lampson. On to Buchanan, Michigan, Redbud Track and Trail for round five of the 125cc National Championship Series. Let's pick up the action in photo number one. Jeff Emig is out front. He's long gone. We're looking at the battle for the number two position. In second is Guy Cooper and Mike LaRocco. This moto is winding down. LaRocco suffered a horrible start, had come up through the pack to take over that number three slot with not too many laps to go. He's looking to pick up one more position on this racetrack. Now coming into round five, LaRocco has a 35-point lead on the field. It's almost time for LaRocco to sit back and consider slowing the pace slightly to protect that points lead. Emig, on the other hand, getting every point he possibly can takes the win. Cooper, you'll see him flash across the line just ahead of LaRocco, then Hughes and Swink in that order. That set up the battle for moto number two. The gate drops, and it's underway at Redbud, Michigan. Watch the mechanic that walks into the screen, throws up his arms. He saw something he didn't like in that first corner. You can bet that his rider is not out front. To tell you who is out front, it's Jeff Emig continuing his score to the racetrack. Emig got hot just one week earlier, and he stays hot. He's going to go on and take the overall win at Redbud, Michigan. Now, there's Guy Cooper suffering just one of the problems that Cooper will have in this second moto. He finished second in moto number one. He's going to get an 11th place here. Here comes Mike LaRocco on the charge. LaRocco now working to the rear wheel of Ezra Lusk, a Suzuki rider out of Bainbridge, Georgia, rider number 117. Lusk, just a youngster to the National Championship Wars. He's going to be taught a lesson here as Mike LaRocco will take the measure of Lusk and show him what it's all about on the National Championship trail. Lusk goes to the inside. Morocco got a good drive as he squared that corner off and uh, come out of it. Uh, throttle pinned to the lock to take over the number one position. From that point, Morocco started to close on Jeff Emig. You could see the difference between the two at that point in the racetrack. Time is running out. Morocco in second. Emig is first as Relus running in the number three position. Morocco would pound away, picking up a second here, a half second there. Finally, with three laps to go, he moved to the rear wheel of Emig. And now watch this. LaRocco completes a triple. Emig has a problem, could only ride over that series of three jumps. And with that move, LaRocco takes over the number one position. Now, Emig's bike appears to be back to normal. Watch him jamming. Here's another look at that. See his right leg jamming that brake lever? He's trying to free a rock that became lodged in the brake mechanism. Now you see LaRocco completed the triple. Emig was just riding, cost him the uh, uh, lead in moto number one. He went out to take the overall win for the day, followed by LaRocco, Lust, Swink, and Hughes. Here are the point standings now. LaRocco uh, still in front. Cooper has taken over the number two position. Emig is all the way up to third. Tishner fourth. Jeremy McGrath is in fifth. Let's go to Troy, Ohio for round six of the 125CC National Championship Series. A lot of rain, a lot more mud, Brian Swing talked about. Uh, I just rode second practice is pretty bad. It looks like it's getting worse. I think if it rains, it'll be better because right now the mud's really sticky. And if it starts raining, I think it'll loosen up a little bit and not be so bad. Turned out to be pretty bad for Brian Swink. He finished 38th in the first moto. He'd come back with a 34th in the second moto. Now watch, you'll see how something like that could happen. Those bikes were nice and clean just one second ago. Look at them now. The riders in the back of the pack had absolutely no chance. Once they were blasted by that initial uh, dousing of mud and water, it was pretty much all over. The riders up front that had opportunities to uh, make some early passes to keep their goggles clean, to have some kind of vision in these terrible conditions were the ones that would do well. After a couple of corners at the Troy, Ohio track, Mike 
LaRocco emerged as the leader. Now, you can see Mike LaRocco, rider number seven, is covered with mud. He had to make a couple of those quick passes in the early going to break free. Once there, though, Mike LaRocco is in a wonderful situation. He has no one in front of him to throw mud back on him, and it's an opportunity to open up some kind of a gap over the rest of the field. Jeff Emig is close to the front. Guy Cooper quickly moves into the number two position. Now watch, you'll see the mud take its toll here as one rider kisses the ground in that soft mud. One thing about falling on a day like today, it's not like tumbling over uh, hard ground where you get a lot of abrasion and you're going to get a lot of injury. Today, the mud just kind of sucks you up. Late in the going, here's Mike Morocco. He's pretty much on cruise control now. He had this huge lead, and all Morocco wants to do is get through the moto by protecting it. But not Guy Cooper. Cooper is still running in the number two position. Now watch the move coming up on the part of Cooper. He's airing it out, and he's going to almost lose it. Watch this. Off the motorcycle. Back down. He takes a couple of running steps beside it. <laughs> Look at that. Pumps his left arm and acknowledges was cheering and hollering and wondering, I think, how he did that. Now, there was Jeff Emming holding down third. Let's take another look at Coop. Here he comes. He's setting up, and look at this. His feet flipped off the peg. Why he didn't let go of the motorcycle when he was way up in the air is beyond me. That seems like it would have been the safest thing to do. And not Coop. He figured, heck, I'm going to save it. Now, just after that, Cooper pulled into the mechanic signal area to get a new pair of goggles. You can see Cooper's rear fender bobbing up. That's due to the weight of the mud. The new goggles are on, and Cooper takes off. Watch those to the left of the screen. Here comes Jeff Emig with a good, fast line. Emig under full power, dives into the corner underneath Cooper. Cooper saw him coming and managed to get out of that corner ahead of Emig. Now, we'll go back to that battle in just a second. Meanwhile, take a look at Mike Morocco out front. Every time Morocco crosses the finish line, he says, please, where's the checkered flag? Let's get this thing over. Now watch this. Watch this double that Cooper tried. He really nails it, but it's too slippery. He cased it, and you'll see Emig riding through it. See that? Cooper went down, went down hard in this slippery mud. He could have uh, rode through that section and been all right, but no, he tried to double. Now Mike LaRocco up front, and LaRocco's on cruise control. He ran off the race track. And go back to the point of the racetrack where he exited. That's according to AMA rules. He got back on the track and once again heads for the finish line. Again, note the fenders that are bobbing up and down. There must be 75, maybe 150 pounds of mud caked on the bottom side of that motorcycle. Here's a rider that stopped to weigh his bike. And uh, right now he's looking around saying which end is which, where are the handlebars? Conditions at Troy, Ohio, just about as bad as they can get. Watch Cooper one more time. And again, he's still trying to double up. Comes up short on that jump. This time he saves it. And uh, I don't know, if you're Guy Cooper, what you do at this point? I think I'd have a tendency to settle back and say, hey, I'm just going to take what I can get out of this one. We'll see what happens in moto number two. As Morocco heads to the checkered flag, I'll tell you what happened in moto number two. Morocco finished second. Jeff Emig, who will finish second here in moto number one, here he comes, did the winning in the second moto. That gave him the overall win for the day. Mike LaRocco took second place in the second moto. He finished second overall. Then Cooper with a pair of thirds. Larry Ward, Jimmy Button rounding out the top five. With a champagne shower, round six is history. We'll head to round seven in the Pacific Northwest, Washougal Park in Washougal, Washington. Weather conditions a little bit better as we take a look at the point. And Doug Henry tells us about this Washougal racetrack. Yeah, it's uh, really loamy and it's nice and moist and it stays like that for uh, most of the day. And there's, there's a big crowd out there. There's a lot of fans and, you know, the riders love to see a lot of people come to the races. It shows them, you know, that, that they're really rooting for you. When the gate drops for the first moto with the 125cc class, Mike Morocco, rider number seven, carried with him a 58-point advantage in the points chase. Before the day was out, that huge points lead would be severely gentle. Out front of the opening lap in the 125 class was Brian Swank out of Benton, Michigan, rider number 15 of Ford Suzuki. Second place in the early going is rider number 22, that's Buddy Antonez. He's aboard a peak antifreeze uh, Pro Circuit Honda. Third place, rider number 17, is Jeremy McGrath, a teammate to Antonez. And there's Guy Cooper holding down the number four position. Swink and McGrath are the Eastern and Western 125cc regional Supercross champs. You understand what makes 125 tick? 
although both of them have experienced difficulties in this outdoor season. At Washugalo, Brian Twink, at least temporarily, seems to have found the answers to all of his troubles. Now watch this move coming up. Watch Cooper slam into McGrath. McGrath grabs hold of Cooper's motorcycle, pulls it a little ways down the track, and he gets off. Cooper stands on his own bike, pushes McGrath's bike off, and he picks his up, and he wants to get back into this one. So Jeremy McGrath, an innocent victim, having one of his better rides today, saw it interrupted uh, in uh, rather a rude style by Guy Cooper. Here's another look. Cooper goes down, his foot pack being tangled in McGrath's rear wheel. McGrath says, what's that dead weight for? This thing doesn't handle well at all. He steps off and they start to sort them out. McGrath will go on to finish eighth in this moto. And then uh, Guy Cooper, on the other hand, is going to drop a few more positions. He'll finish 13th. Meanwhile, up front, Jeff Emig, rider number eight on the right-hand side of your screen, is challenging Swing for the number one position. Emig, just three weeks earlier, had never won a 125 national. Then he won two in a row. He's looking for three in a row here at Washugo. It's number 23. That was Ron Fisher. He's holding down the number three position. Now watch the action coming up. Watch Emig. He goes to the inside. He tries to take the measure, a lot of bumping and shoving, tries to get by Brian Swink, but Swink has done a little bit of shoving and bumping in his time, and he refuses, absolutely refuses to be impressed by uh, the antics of Jeff Emmy. Now remember that move. In just a few moments, you're going to see several more just like it as these two front runners get into a bumping and shoving match here at this Wash Hugo track. Jeff Emig has taken over the number one position. Watch this now. Watch as Swing goes to the inside. Wham! Takes the wheel away from Jeff Emig, and he regains the number one position. So it's Swing out front. Emig running second. And here comes Emig right back. And he is going to try to cut Swink off. But he lost his momentum, lost the drive. And Swink was actually able to hold on to the lead until this. Emig crosses over the top in midair on a jump crosses in front of uh, Brian Swink to take the line away and regain that number one spot. Here's some more contact as Swink tries to get to the inside and ram Emig. He was successful there. He was not successful in the past. So moto number one would end in the order they're in right now. Jeff Emig will take the win and running into number two position, Brian Swink, he'll hold on to finish second. Let's go back and take a look at some of this bumping and shoving. Here's the move that started the whole thing. And let me tell you while we watch this, that Emig would win both motos on the day. Steve Lampson is going to finish second overall. He'll have a fourth and a second. Uh, Ron Tishner with a third and six is going to be third overall. Doug Henry will be fourth overall with a five and a four. Here comes uh, Jeff Emig. He'll take the checkers, and we will go to Jeff Emig. Yeah, I think it's been uh, five years now, and, uh, you know, it's a whole lot different, you know, like to come here, you know, and win both motos from behind. And, you know, it, it just makes me feel really good. You know, yeah. I, well, I think you made these pants feel real good. Jeff Emig, ladies and gentlemen, Team Yamaha with the win. And the win for Jeff Emig vaulted the young Yamaha rider with three wins in a row. Keep that in mind. To sole possession of second place. He is 28 points behind Mike Morocco as we head into round eight. Millville, Minnesota, Spring Creek Motocross Park. Located just an hour or so south of the Minneapolis-St. Paul area, Millville is a racetrack with severe elevation changes and terrain that encompasses just about everything you'll find on any motocross track throughout the country. There's a little bit of hard pack. There are a couple of very, very treacherous soft sand conditions that uh, change, it seems to change the lines most every time around. In the opening moto, Mike LaRocco took the early lead. Jeff Emig, the rider that had been chasing him and had cut into his points margin, rider number eight from Highland, California, was in the number five position. He was followed by Ron Tishner. There was Doug Henry, Ezra Lutz, as the rest of the field worked their way through the corners here in lap number one. It was in this first moto that Jeff Emig saw his charge toward the front of the leaderboard ended. He would take a tumble and end up finishing in the number 19 position in moto number one. Here's a battle that occurred in the first moto. Rider number 117 has for Lusk. He's in second place, being chased by Ronnie Tishner. Rider number 23, Lusk will win that one. He'll finish second, Tishner third. Morocco takes the win. He'll finish in the number two position in the second moto as a Jeff Emig came back to win that one. Overall for the day, Tishner was second with a pair of thirds. 
So with three rounds to go, Mike LaRocco's point spread as we head to Broom Tioga in Binghamton, New York, is 48 over second place Jeff Emmy. An ironclad points lead? We'll see. Here Larry Ward talked about this Broom Tioga track. I've heard that this track uh, often has one line around it. Is that going to be a factor? Um, that's a factor at every race. Uh, there's places to pass out here as, as there is at any national track. Um, we, you just, if there's not a place to pass, you got to pass. So we'll, we'll make the best of it. That was Larry Ward with one national championship victory to his credit so far in 1992, setting eighth place in the standings. Who makes the best of it coming out of corner number one? Mike LaRocco, rider number seven, who got the worst of it. That was Denny Stevenson, rider number 11, that LaRocco was using for traction, and that triggered a monumental traffic jam in that corner. A good number of the riders in the field that uh, were looking to pick up points out here today are going to have to come from way off the face. When the carnage had cleared in the first corner, and the riders had straightened themselves out, it turned out to be Mike LaRocco being chased by Jeff Emmick. Those are the two riders that have provided the action so far in the series. Let's take another look. See LaRocco coming right to the inside of Stevenson. Stevenson has nowhere to go. LaRocco just put his wheels underneath him and wiped Stevenson out. Meanwhile, out on the racetrack, the two riders that are holding down the number one and number two position in the standing are running in that order here in moto number one. At one point in time, LaRocco in the series had a huge lead. It was cut down to about 28 points by Jeff Emig, who started the season very slow and is now catching up. Then in the last go-around, a 19th place finish stopped Emig's point charge and dropped him to about 48 points back off the pace. So in this one, it's LaRocco, it's Emig. Buddy Antonez was running in a number three position, rider number 16 with Steve Lampson, he's running back and forth. We had a shot of Ronnie Tishner. He was rider number 23. And where was Guy Cooper? Al Coop was involved in that first corner of Brakus. He will ultimately finish in the number 10 position in moto number one. Meanwhile, up front, the battle rages. Mike LaRocco out front has everything to lose. He's riding his own race. He's not really that concerned with Jeff Emig behind him. I think Emig would like to force LaRocco into making some kind of a very stupid error that might knock him out of the moto. Certainly not wishing any kind of injury on LaRocco, but if Mike LaRocco were to crash and bend the portion of his motorcycle that would prevent him from getting points in one or two motos, I don't think you would find Jeff Emig being too unhappy about the situation. So perhaps Emig just content to follow LaRocco at this point. He knows that just beating LaRocco is not going to give him the kind of points that he needs to dent that championship run that LaRocco is currently putting on. 48 points is uh, not something you can take away by beating LaRocco by a position or two with only a half dozen motos remaining in the 1993 125. 1992, let's correct that, 125 National Championship Series. So LaRocco holding the lead as he has since the outset, and Emmy content to follow and try to force the issue. Every once in a while, LaRocco looks over his shoulders to see where Emmy might be, and he sees the big number eight plate on the front of that Yamaha motorcycle just breathing down his rear wheel, not trying to really make the pass, but to badger Mike LaRocco, as we said, into making some kind of a mistake. Front the end of the moto, LaRocco opened it up. Here's Emmy taking the checkered flag. He finishes in the number two position. And we'll turn our attention to moto number two. Let me tell you that the pair of riders out front will ultimately be Emig and LaRocco in that order. They just flip-flop for the second moto. Emig will take the win. Mike LaRocco will finish in the number two position. The overall win will go to Emig. For Guy Cooper, round nine in Binghamton, New York. A round that he would just as soon forget. The veteran Suzuki rider ended his campaign for a 1993 championship with a broken leg. He would be out for the rest of the season. Emig, the overall winner, followed by LaRocco, the two shared points as they head to round 10, Delmont, Pennsylvania, Steel City, USA. Let's take a look at the gap in the points between them. It's back to 48 points. That's a lot of points to make up with two races, just four motos to go. Anything can happen, and I'll tell you at the outset, this round 10 at Steel City, USA will alter the course of the 125cc championship considerably. Mike LaRocco getting off at the back part of the pack. Jeff Emig running about fourth or fifth through the first couple of corners. The field sorts itself out. Ryan Hughes is out front, rider number 68. He's being pushed by Doug Henry. Henry aboard the Yamaha, rider number 19. 
Holding down the number three position is rider number 10 on the Suzuki, Larry Ward. And here comes Jeff Emmett for Team Yamaha, rider number eight. Watch carefully. You'll notice several riders slipping and sliding their way around this Steel City racetrack. Combination of rain and clay created a very slippery situation. Ryan Hughes from Escondido, California. Doug Henry from Oxford, Connecticut. Just about as far apart as you can get in this United States, but about as close as you want to be when you're riding a pair of motorcycles. Henry took the lead, but just for a couple of seconds, as Ryan Hughes held onto the good line to the inside, he grabbed it right back, but Henry grabbed a handful of throttle and out jumped Ryan Hughes to take over for the second time today, the number one position. So it's Doug Henry out front. It's Ryan Hughes in second. Jeff Emick has worked to the number three position. There's Larry Ward, rider number 10. He's in fourth. And fifth place is rider number 17. That's Jeremy McGrath. Now, you remember the clay in the water? Watch what happens. Ryan Hughes goes down. Jeff Emick has to go wide. And he's going to be passed by a couple of riders before he gets his momentum back. Taking over the number one position, rider number 19 is Doug Henry. He's aboard the DGY Yamaha, holding second. The Suzuki of Larry Ward, rider number 10. And Jeff Emick is in the number eight position. Watch this move coming up. Emick on the downhill, takes the line away from Ward, forces him off the end of the racetrack. Now remember that, you're going to see it again in just a couple of moments, a few corners from now. First, we're going to have to get rid of Larry Ward. He'll do that all by himself. Watch. Remember this slick track just a moment ago? It claimed uh, the victim in Ryan Hughes. It's going to take Larry Ward with him. He'll make this right-hander and barely get on the gas, and the bike just slides right around. Again, the rear wheel catches up with the front wheel. The rider has nowhere to go. Here's that move coming up again on the downhill section. Henry saw it coming, and he got on the brakes instead of having to run off the edge of the racetrack, so he avoided that. However, he lost all of his momentum. And a good move on the part of Jeff uh, Emick as he takes over the number one position. Now, who was the fastest rider on the track while all of that was going on? He just slid into third spot. Mike LaRocco from the back of the pack had caught the leaders. LaRocco was turning in an unbelievable ride under, at best, trying conditions. See how slippery that racetrack is? Every time you get on the gas just a little bit, the bike wants to move out from underneath you. So LaRocco fighting that, plus fighting the traffic, had moved all the way up to third. He was definitely on the gas. And now, LaRocco is gone. Just a couple of corners later, the camera records Jeff Femi coming through. It records rider number 19, Doug Henry, going back a ways. There is LaRocco. You see him kicking at his shift lever. He is trying to get the bike into gear. It's not going anywhere. Meanwhile, out front, Emig is having a field day. He took a quick look back, did not see LaRocco. He knows there is some kind of a problem, and it's an opportunity for him to gain major points here in the first moto. LaRocco trying to jam that motorcycle into gear. It's not going to work. He's going to record a DNF. That equates to a did not finish. Checkered flag coming up. Henry gave it everything that he had, a last-ditch effort. Emig was able to hold on. He uh, points over at uh, Doug Henry, says, good race. Second moto for Mike LaRocco. It was more of the same. This time, the carburetor air intake boot fell off. He would record a second DNF in as many motos. There's LaRocco, rider number seven, pushing his bike to the side of the racetrack. Mike Healy, an American rider that has spent the last couple of years in Europe, did the winning in the second moto. The overall win, though, went to Jeff Emig. Picked up a ton of points today. Let's take a look at that point gap. It went from 48 down to one point with two motos to go in the 1992 125 cc national championship race two motos winners take off let's talk to the riders about their prospects here today you know that was a bad weekend for me i kind of blew out my whole points lead but uh you know this is a new weekend and hopefully i hit rock bottom on bad luck and i can have good luck from here on so uh you know that's behind me and hopefully i can have a good race here at uh butts creek like even though you know i won a lot of races here um you know, I never thought I'd be one point behind coming into the final race. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether that's good or bad. I mean, I guess we'll find out at the end of the day. After 11 events, the fate of the 125cc national championship would be decided long before the end of the day. It would be decided not with a classic duel between two riders fighting for the number one plate, but by an incident with two motorcycles banging together in a corner in the heat of battle. 
As the field sorted themselves out in moto number one, it was Jeff Emig out front, Ron Tishner running into number two position. Mike LaRocco was holding down the number three spot. To the mechanics, to the spectators at Buzz Creek, a championship duel was in the making. Jeff Emig out front wanted to put as much distance between himself and LaRocco as he possibly could. He knew LaRocco was capable of charging to the front at every turn of the racetrack. So with Ron Tishner as a buffer, Emig grabbed a handful of throttle and immediately opened a huge lead on the rest of the field. Tishner running in the number two position, LaRocco running in third had room to pass, and some spectators, some mechanics began to note that LaRocco was not taking advantage of that room, that LaRocco seemed content to stay in the number three position. Up front, Emig had no idea that LaRocco was slowing behind him. LaRocco kept pace with Tishner, but the pack was catching them. Brian Hughes and the rest were coming. They were on the charge. LaRocco could only ride as fast as his motorcycle would travel. That was not fast enough. It was apparent problems existed. The nature of the problem remained to be seen. Jeff Emig, putting lap number one on the book, cast a quick look over his shoulder and saw nothing. Had he looked behind him at this time, he'd have seen Mike LaRocco coming over the hill, waving his arms in disgust as he pulled into the mechanic's signal area. His combination father, mechanic, talking to Mike about the problem, he'll throw his pit board in disgust as the realization sinks in. The championship is over. Mike LaRocco had broken a shift lever somewhere on the first lap. He thinks in the first corner, he thinks banging bars with Ron Tishner. There was no replacement shift lever in the Kawasaki pits. So LaRocco returned to the fray, returned to the racetrack for one more lap before he could pull in to have the damage repaired. By then it was too late. Had there been a shift lever in the pits, it is doubtful that it would have made any difference in the outcome. So the 1992 125cc national championship was settled not on the track, but in an altercation in the corner. When Jeff Emig took the checkered flag, the championship was as good as his. All he needed was a respectable finish in the second moto. He got that easily as he went on to score the win. Mike LaRocco was there to challenge, but heartbroken, he let Emig go. Beating Emig in that second moto would have made absolutely no difference. Emig took the overall win for the day with a pair of moto wins. Ron Tishner was second. Hughes routing out the top three. When it was over, Jeff Emig received the congratulations of his pit crew. He had won his first ever 125cc national championship event earlier in the season. He followed that up with five more. So with six wins, Jeff Emig is the 125cc national champ. 430 points. Mike LaRocco finishes second with 411. Ron Tishner rounding out the top three. Let's go to Jeff Emig and hear his thoughts on winning the title. I feel pretty, pretty uh, relieved, I think is the word I'm looking for. You know, been like all week long, you know, I went through it in my head. You know, so I said, okay, bottom line, if you win both motos, then you win the championship. And won both motos, win the championship. In very muddy conditions in the second moto as well. Yeah, when I was on the line, uh, you know, or, you know, like actually I was taking a nap in between motos, woke up, you know, like it was raining. I said, oh, man. I said, okay, just get the whole shot and make your life easy. You know, you know, I got the whole shot both motos and made my life a whole lot easier, a whole lot happier. We'll congratulate and leave a happy Jeff Emig and turn our attention to the 250cc national championship. Let's take a look at the number one plate holder, Jean-Michel Bale, two times a world champ and one year ago winning the AMA Supercross 250 and 500cc crowns. His teammate aboard the Honda is Jeff Stanton, two times a 250cc champ and two times a Supercross champion. Bale took Stanton's titles from him, and Stanton wants them back. Here's a newcomer to the 250cc ranks, Mike Kidrowski. He has won a pair of 125cc national championships. He's looking to turn his talents now to the 250 class. Damon Bradshaw, a rider that most everyone suspects is a championship just waiting to happen. Perhaps it'll come in this 250 class of 1992. Jeff Ward, this is his last season for Team Kawasaki. Let's make that his last season ever. Check out the credentials. One of the winningest and most remembered, revered riders of all time in the history of American motocross. 
Wardy is hanging it up at the close of the 1992 season. For the opening round of the 250 CC National Championship Series, we return to Gainesville, Florida, Gatorback Raceway. That's a look at Jeff Stanton, his mechanic, Dan Bentley. Let's talk to Jeff. Jeff, this is the beginning of the new season on the uh, 250 Outdoor Nationals. Are you looking forward to claiming the title? Yeah, I am. Uh, I lost it in 1991, so uh, 92 is a new year for me. I look forward to going out there and staying healthy and once again winning that championship. You've been out for one practice session this morning. How's the track? The track's good. It's uh, typical of Gainesville. It's going to get nice and rough, and it's, uh, of course, nice, warm Florida climate. It's going to be it's going to be some good racing. And Stanton, along with this rider, should be in the middle of it. Damon Bradshaw, not too happy with the way things went in practice. Let's hear what he has to say. You work, you're working with, as you mentioned, a, a team that's used to winning championships. Has that helped you out? Um, yeah, it does, you know, because all the guys have got a lot of experience. You know, they've all been there with the winning, winningest riders, and, uh, you know, hopefully they can, they can give me some of that guidance. You know, I can always, you can never quit learning. You know, I'm still learning from those guys, and they still learn it from me, so it helps out to have a team like that. And a team like that provided all kinds of action in moto number one as the season opener got underway in the 250 class. Stanton had come from off the pace to take the lead. He bobbled. Doug Duback got it back. Watch this fault by Bradshaw. Watch on the left side of your screen. Look at that flight. Bradshaw just uncorked the longest, the highest, most ridiculous jump you've ever seen in your life. He went on to win moto number one. Stanton was second. Kibrowski third. Doug Duback finished fourth. And Jean-Michel Bale finished in the number five slot. That was moto number one. Now let's catch up with the 250 class as the gate drops in the second moto at Gainesville. Now the 250 CC Motocross Series, the Outdoor National Championship Series, is six races long. Now the 125 National Championship Series that we just watched was 11 races long. At the first six 125 events, there was a 250 CC National Championship round. At the final five 125 CC events, there was a 500 CC National Championship round. We'll get to those 500s a little bit later in the program. In the meantime, in the second moto, a pair of Honda teammates, Jeff Stanton, rider number two. He's been a 250 CC Outdoor National Champ on two occasions. Jean-Michel Bale, rider number one, he is the defending 250 champ. One year ago, Bale won the 250 title, he won the 500 title, and he won the Supercross title. He was everything in uh, Supercross and Motocross in 1991. Here Bale putting a hurting on his teammate as he takes over the lead in moto number two in this 250 class. Running up with the leaders, number 35 is Sean Kalos. He's aboard a Yamaha out of Litchfield Park, Arizona. Jean-Michel Bale continues to lead Stampin' in this opening 250 race. Jean-Michel Bale has already announced his retirement from motocross. He claims that in 1993, he'll turn his talents toward the sport of road racing. Wants to campaign the World Championship Trail in the 500cc class, more than likely in 1993. If indeed Bale does go road racing, he'll do it aboard the 250. Here he shows America that uh, he is the number one motocrosser in the world. Stanton follows, watch Bradshaw coming up. Bradshaw has just started to move up through the pack when this happened. A slight tumble, looks like he got the wheel outside of the rut and didn't have enough momentum to carry himself around that corner, so Bradshaw went down. Now Bradshaw developed a problem with the motorcycle that would carry him into the pits. We'll see that in just a second. In the meantime, Jeff Stanton has started to close the gap on Jean-Michel Bale, and look at this, rider number six, Jeff Ward starting to make a move, and here comes Mike Kudrowski right behind him. Jeff Ward has announced his retirement. Unlike Jean-Michel Bale, he's going to uh, leave two wheels entirely. He wants to go car racing. Now here comes Bradshaw into the pit. He's pointing at his throttle. That was the result of that little crash that Bradshaw took. Brian Lunas, his mechanic, was digging for the tools. Bradshaw would get back in it. He would work up to uh, somewhere close to the top 10. Then severe stomach cramps would put him back away further. He ended up finishing 16th in this moto. Meanwhile, check out the battle between the Honda teammates. Jean-Michel Bale is on the right, Jeff Stanton on the left. Stanton was the early leader. Bale made the pass, and he led for most of the middle laps. And now Stanton is coming back, and he regains the number one position. Unbelievable race action in this, the opening round of the 250 CC National Championship Series. You have to wonder if Kudrowski gets off the line with these two, if... Uh, Damon Bradshaw keeps it upright and he stays with these two. What kind of a series are we going to have? 
in the estimation of most, it is going to be extremely exciting and more than likely will go right down to the wire. Jeff Stanton with two 250cc titles under his belt, looking to regain that number one position from his teammate, Jean-Michel Vail. And if anything, that's just an added incentive, the fact that his teammate has it. And there is Stanton coasting around a slow Damon Bradshaw as he heads up the hill to collect the checkered flag. He'll take the overall win with moto finishes of 2-1. Jean-Michel Bale with uh, moto finishes of 5-2 will finish second overall. There's Kudrowski, he finished third, then Jeff Ward and Doug Dubai. Just like in the 125 class, overall positions are determined in the 250 class by tabulating the points that a rider earns in each of the two motos. Let's go to Southwick, Massachusetts for the second round of the 250 class. Jeff Ward talked about the track. Yeah, well, this, this track's fast, and it's got a lot of big holes, and, uh, you know, sand, we don't race too much sand, and now it's just circuits, so when they come here, it, 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 it can bite you real quick, and it does. It's done me in the past, but I've been here enough to where I know where the danger parts are and where to be careful, so for somebody that's been here for one time, it, it takes its toll on you. We'll pick up the action in moto number two. The first moto was won in a landslide by David Bradshaw. He got out front, waved goodbye to the rest of the field, won it by 30 seconds. Jeff Stanton finished second after starting in the middle of the pack. Mike Kudrowski was third, and you have a quick look at Stanton there. Rider number two, again, he's in the middle of the pack. Yamaha's Doug Dubach leads it. His teammate, the rider that won, moto number one, Bradshaw, was running somewhere around mid-pack and watch this. Now, you're not going to see Damon Bradshaw. You're only going to see a lot of bikes, and you're going to see some people stepping off, a lot of sand being thrown. Bradshaw got caught up in that mess, and he was well off the pace. He would have to uh, begin his charge to the front from the rear. Doug Dubach, meanwhile, letting it all hang out, being chased by John michel Bale, and Dubach was really on the gas, doing what he could do to hold John michel Bale at bay. Just doesn't work, though. When the Frenchman's after you, the Frenchman is going to get you. He got Dubai. Dubai, though, bouncing right back, refuses to go away. In the second consecutive week, Doug Dubai, Team Yamaha, shows that uh, he does have indeed what it takes to ride outdoor motocross. Dubai has been around for a good number of years and has really not distinguished himself in the national championship circuit in terms of clicking off with a regular basis, the seconds, thirds, and occasional wins that others have. He's a journeyman rider, though, one of the finest guys on the circuit and also one of the fastest. Meanwhile, the Frenchman Jean-Michel Bale has his hands full with Mike Kudrowski, the Kawasaki rider from Acton, California. Kudrowski takes the measure of Bale to move into the number one position with Bale right behind. Don't forget Stanton is still charging through the pack. He's coming from the mid-pack position, while Bradshaw had dropped all the way back to the rear end of the pack. He, too, is charging. Out front, though, is rider number three, Mike Kudrowski, then Jean-Michel Bale, and there's a quick look at Stanton, who has now worked his way to the rear wheel of Jean-Michel Bale. Stanton is in third. So there's the running order, Kudrowski, Bale, and Stanton. For the two bikes in red, it's a replay of one week ago at Gainesville. Only difference now is Mike Kudrowski has thrown his name into the hat. And he is out front, leading the pair of Honda riders. Jeff Stanton stalks Kudrowski, studying every move that Kudrowski makes. And when Stanton thinks the time is right, zap! He's going to make some kind of a move and try to get around the Acton, California-based Kawasaki rider. There, Stanton had an inside line. Kudrowski would not cooperate. In the early going, many uh, self-proclaimed experts had indicated that the championship should be decided between Bradshaw, Stanton, Bale, and Kudrowski. They threw the fourth rider into that fray and said one of those four guys ought to do it. Much as we'd like to take a look at Jeff Ward, age has gotten to him and he's not as fast as he used to be over a long period of time. So for a sprint race, you might have a tendency to look at Ward, but being it's a moto that's 30 minutes plus two laps long, we're going to pass on that one. Strange to hear them say that because Ward is one of the most finely conditioned athletes that you'll find anywhere in the world, and I, I really rather doubt that strength and endurance are his problems or the reasons that he's going to quit racing. I think it's just as he said, it's time to look at other fields of endeavor. Meanwhile, Mike Kudrowski showing the short way around the racetrack to Jeff Stanton, and that pair of riders has left Jean-Michel Bale and the rest of the field quite a way off the pace. 
Let's watch a few of the techniques employed by this pair of riders. Kidrowski bobbled right there. Jeff Stanton slid by, got to the inside, and he made the pass. Kidrowski is charging right back, looking for some kind of running room, and he is not going to get it. Had an opportunity there. He could have given Stanton a little bit of a nudge and chose not to do it. So, winning the last moto and the overall for the day was Jeff Stanton. Mike Kudrowski finished second. Then came Bradshaw, Jean-Michel Bale, and John Dowd from Chicopee, Massachusetts. Round three of the National Championship Series. Here are the points going in. 94 for Stanton, then 80 Kudrowski, 73 Bale, 70 Damon Bradshaw. So there are four riders that are still in the hunt for this 250cc National Championship. Let's see how they fare as the gate has dropped in moto number one. Mike Kidrowski off to a good start, as are the Honda teammates. Jeff Stanton, Jean-Michel Bale, they're fairly close to the front. Damon Bradshaw is just off the pace. The rider that is out front, though, is a local favorite from Export, Pennsylvania. That's Mike Jones. Jones, number 38, had jumped to the early lead here in moto number one and thrilled the crowd. Jean-Michel Bale just made the move to put him into the number one position, dropping Jones back to second. Kudrowski would have been third at that point. Then Jeff Stanton, and back a couple of more slots was Damon Bradshaw. Mike Jones has faded from the front. He's worked his way back toward the middle portion of the racetrack in this opening moto. Jean-Michel Bale has widened the gap. The uh, lead that he has had throughout the event, Jeff Stanton has now taken over the number two position but he is a good way behind Jean-Michel Bale. With him, though, as they try to close the gap was Mike Kudrowski and Damon Bradshaw. A few laps later, Stanton had the job done. The nasty mud seemed to be tailor-made for his riding style, and Bradshaw now moves within 10 feet of Jean-Michel Bale, the leader in this one. There are no other riders at this particular time in sight to contest that battle. David Bradshaw has moved to the number three position, but Bradshaw is well behind the lead duo. It would appear at this point that it would be up to the two of them, the Honda teammates, Jeff Stanton, rider number two, Jean-Michel Bale, the Frenchman, rider number one. It would be up to those two teammates to establish who would win the overall here in uh, High Point Raceway. But a surprise coming up, Damon Bradshaw, who had not gated particularly well, but had hung in there throughout the tire moto. There's Bradshaw. He has moved to the number two position in the closing laps. Jeff Stanton has the lead. Bradshaw is running in second place. Bale has dropped back to third. Let's take a look at this challenging battle between the two front runners. Stanton, the king of the 250 class. He did lose the number one plate to Jean-Michel Bale in 19 and 91 but he has indicated that here in 92 it's all his he's going to get it back and you have to believe him at this point he has a rather large lead in the championship point standings but watch this move Stanton holds his line inside and figures he's getting around that corner as fast as anyone can David Bradshaw with an outside line showed Stanton that he wasn't going quite as fast as he thought he was then Gene Dumack would park the motorcycle in the center of the racetrack almost gets flipped by all three riders finally decides to move it. In any event, Damon Bradshaw has taken over as the white flag is waved, signifying one lap remaining, has taken over the number one position. There's the checkered flag. Bradshaw wins it. Stanton is going to come home in the number two slot. Jean-Michel Bale will finish third. Here are the first moto results. Mike Kudrowski was fourth, and Doug Dubach rounded out the top five. In between motos, more rain and more mud. Made it even sloppier for moto number two in the 250 cat class. Gate drops. Now watch the action in the first corner. Bradshaw's gone. He sneaks by. Stanton though ran into the rear wheel of Bradshaw. He gets tangled up with Larry Brooks, rider number 30. He's looking around to see what's holding on to his motorcycle. Turns out that it's Michael Craig, rider number 59. Stanton gets back into it from the back of the pack. He would turn in a ride that uh, netted him fourth place by the end of the moto. An outstanding effort. Jean-Michel Bale is going to finish in the number two position in the moto. Mike Kudrowski will be third in this, the second moto at Mount Morris. Bradshaw wins it, and he wins the overall. With a pair of moto wins, followed by Bale, Stanton, Kudrowski, and Palmer. From too much rain at uh, Mount Morris, Pennsylvania, we're going to Sacramento, California, where they have to manufacture a little bit of water on the racetrack to hold the dust down. 
Let's take a look at the point standings. Jeff Stanton out front by 14 over Bradshaw, then Kedrowski, Bale, and Jeff Ward rounding out the top five. Let's pick up the action from Hangtown with the second moto. In the opening moto, it was Damon Bradshaw taking the win. Finishing in the number two position was Jean-Michel Bale. Third place went to Stanton. Fourth place was Doug Dubach. Rounding out the top five was Larry Brooks. Bradshaw's win in the opening moto, very impressive. He's coming off the overall win at Mount Morris, Pennsylvania just one week earlier. And he obviously is feeling that he is whipping himself and his Yamaha into shape in preparation for the remainder of this 250cc Outdoor National Championship Series. He has forged to the front in moto number two, just as he did in moto number one. He ran away with that one. He'll not be so lucky in moto number two. Jeff Stanton is going to hang tough, and Stanton will ultimately make the pass and will carry him into the lead in the moto. Bradshaw will wisely let him go. Stanton will take the moto win. Bradshaw will finish in the runner-up spot. That will earn him overall honors for the day. Let's check some of the action. Stanton and Bradshaw just pounding every inch of this Hangtown racetrack. It's very hard track and a, a very, very slick. It's not easy to grab the traction out here when you need it. It requires a delicate throttle control. Stanton took an outside line. He managed to get to that corner before Bradshaw did. Eased his Honda over in front of Bradshaw. Bradshaw had to roll the throttle back off the pace and let Stanton go. So Stanton has taken the number one position, and here comes Bradshaw right back at him. But Bradshaw is riding rather tentatively at this point, rather than aggressively. He knows that he's picked up a couple of points by virtue of the fact that he won the opening moto. And Stanton finished in the number three spot. So if Stanton finishes this one and Bradshaw finishes second, well, that's going to give him a couple of points. And I think he would rather accept those two points at this uh, point in time than risk going on his head. There are still two races, and that equates to four motos remaining in the 250cc series. Two races in which anything can happen. And in motocross, it usually does. Here comes Jeff Stanton, downhill, Damon Bradshaw following, stalking, studying the lines of the veteran Jeff Stanton. Bradshaw, 19 years old, looking for his first ever national championship. Stanton already has four of them, and look at that mistake. Bradshaw apparently getting tired, or maybe he has rolled off the throttle too much, and he's in uncharted territory because uh, he's not going as fast as he usually does. Watch this. Goes to the outside of that bale. Maybe he just wanted to find a new line, and he felt the best way to do it was to knock that bale back on the racetrack. Could be he thought bale was coming along, or Stanton might pass there the next go around and run into it. Who knows? In any event, Stanton is going to run into the checkered flag. He'll just roll over the top of the hill. That'll give him second overall for the day. Bradshaw wins it. Let's hear from Damon Bradshaw. He's won two in a row. Yeah, I just I moved over and you know let Jeff go by. I wanted to follow her and. After I did it about a lap afterwards, I decided it was the wrong thing to do. It was so, you know, it was really hard for me to see, and I just tried to do what I could. You know, I wanted to get back around and try to pick up those extra points, but I didn't want to throw it down also, and made a couple mistakes there toward the end behind some lap riders and to settle for second. As the series returns to the Midwest for round number five, Buchanan, Michigan, Bradshaw has two wins, Stanton two. Kedrowski's still looking for his first. I've been running out there, uh, top three, top two, and, you know, top four. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking for that first win, first moto win. I think that's going to give me a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, I think that's what it takes. It's just like riding the 125 class. Once you win a national, then, you, you know, you know you can win. You just keep on going. So, uh, I'm looking for the first one. And today I feel real good. I'm, you know, in perfect shape. I'm ready for this race. My Kawasaki's are running great. So, there's no reason why I can't today. No reason you can't if your name is Mike Kedrowski as we take another look at the point standings. But plenty of reason if your name is Stanton or Bradshaw. Those two riders have pretty much narrowed the points race down to themselves. And that's where the fight for the championship will come from. And fight they did in moto number one. Jeff Stanton took the early lead. Right behind comes Damon Bradshaw. Jeff Matasevich holds down the number three position. Then comes Mike Kidrowski. Jean-Michel Bale, injured in a supercross, is not riding the Red Butt event. So that left Jeff Stanton as the only Honda representative on the track. And watch this move. Damon Bradshaw squirts to the inside of Stanton. And in front of Jeff Stanton's friend and family. Friends and family, let's make that. He's from nearby Sherwood, Michigan. 
Bradshaw takes the measure of the two-time 250cc national champ. Now for the next nine laps or so, this pair of riders will battle each other just wheel to wheel, handlebar to handlebar. Stanton would close to the rear wheel of Bradshaw. Bradshaw would grab a handful of throttle and squirt away. He would open up a 10, maybe 15 bike length advantage, but Stanton would go to work and gain that ground all over again. Finally, somewhere around the midway point, Stanton really began to probe. He would put a wheel to the inside and a wheel to the outside, letting Bradshaw know that he was there, and in general, trying to worry the Mooresville, North Carolina Yamaha rider into making some kind of a mistake so that he could make a clean pass. Bradshaw, though, was up to the task, and each time Stanton would probe, he would get the wheel in. Bradshaw continued to fight him off. This battle went on and on and thrilled the huge Red Bud crowd as they were watching a classic motocross duel. With four rounds to go, four motos to go in the series, if Bradshaw were to win every one of them, he would overtake Stanton in the championship point standings. That must have been in Jeff Stanton's minds as they pounded this red butt track. Stanton knew that he needed to click off one, maybe even two wins before this one would be wrapped up. But coming up, a Bradshaw mistake that would settle the issue and settle the outcome of the 1992 250cc National Championship drive. It would all but hand it to Jeff Stanton on a platter. Now watch Damon Bradshaw closely. And with that mistake, the season was over in the 250 class for Bradshaw. For Stanton, the title was as good as wrapped up. For several seconds, Bradshaw, who had hobbled to the side of the track, uh, lay there immobile before getting up and limping around, trying to shake off the obvious injury to his knee. He was done not only for this moto, but he would not come out for moto number two. Watch again. A violent crash. Bradshaw wrenching a knee in the process, a knee that would, at the end of the season, require surgery. Stanton won the first moto, Kidrowski second, then Dubach, Jeff Ward. Here's moto number two. As we told you, Damon Bradshaw is not in the field. Bradshaw electing to uh, set it out. The championship is as good as lost, and all uh, powers to be in Team Yamaha decided that the best thing for Bradshaw to do would be to rest the knee. The Supercross title at this point in time was still at stake. Larry Brooks took the early lead. He's being battled and followed here by Mike Kidrowski. Kidrowski will eventually pass Brooks. He'll go on to take the win in the second moto. That's going to give Mike Kidrowski the overall win for the day. The first ever of his career in the 250cc class. Earlier in the program, Kidrowski had talked about what it would take to get that first win and what it would mean to him. Jeff Stanton at this point realizes that all he has to do is stay upright on his motorcycle and there's no way he can lose this 250cc national title. So what Stanton needs to be doing is putting that Honda on cruise control and taking it easy. Watch this though. Brooks is up over the jump. Now watch Stanton. Are you putting me on? Stanton could have lost the title right there. It could have all been over. Fortunately, Stanton was not injured in the crash. Fortunately, his motorcycle was not twisted too badly to keep running. And fortunately, he got it running and he got back in the hunt. Look at this. That motorcycle could have been twisted beyond being ridden. And Stanton could easily have wrenched one or both legs or suffered even more of a serious injury. So the crash gods were smiling on Stanton and not on Bradshaw. The checkered flag went to Kidrowski, and he's happy. He takes his first ever national win. Second overall for the day went to Jeff Stanton, followed by Jeff Ward. Doug Dubach was fourth, and Jeff Matasevich rounded out the top five. Here are the point standings as the 250cc series heads into the final round at uh, Troy, Ohio, Kenworthy's Motocross Park. Jeff Stanton is on top by 45 over Kidrowski. Now what that equates to is a 15th place finish in either the first or second moto. If he does that, regardless of what Kidrowski does, Kidrowski wins in both. Stanton would still be the 1992 national champ. Number nine is Jeff Matasevich aboard the Kawasaki. Looked like he got a good hole shot, but it is wet, it is gooey, it is nasty, it is slippery, just as gnarly and rotten as it can be here at Kenworthy. And the hole shot went to Jeff Stanton, who seemingly came from nowhere. 
Riders already are down all over the racetrack. It's going to be one of those days. There's only one place to be running, and that's up front. If you are up front, and you don't have the mud, you don't have the water being thrown back on you like the back markers will have all day long. So Stanton out front and right behind him, Jean-Michel Bale, his Honda teammate and the defending 250cc national champ, and Bale sweeps into the number one position. Oddly enough, Jean-Michel Bale did not win a single 250cc race in 1991 when he won the 250cc title. As a matter of fact, Bale has only one 250cc national win to his credit. He won that one in Gainesville, Florida in 1989. He'd come over to the United States to ride a couple of super cross event was headed back to Europe to compete in the 250cc world championship his final race prior to leaving for Europe was in Gainesville the opening round of the 89 season Bale took the overall win went back to Europe and won the national champion the world championship rather in the 250 class he had not won though another United States outdoor 250 national since that point in time He's taking the measure of Stanton here today in the final round of the 250cc National Championship Series. Now you might wonder, why wouldn't Stanton lay off the pace, let Bale go? He only needs six points, let's collect the championship and go home. I'm here to tell you, there is no love lost between this pair of teammates. They've just come off a rather bitter Supercross season where Stanton won the title. Jean-Michel Bale blamed Jeff Stanton for an injury that kept him out of the last race or kept him from being competitive and kept him from winning the title. Stanton says, Fooey, I never touched the guy. Bale says, yes, you did. You knocked me down. The video shows Stanton was in the right. Bale uh, still upset over the way the whole thing was handled. So Stanton says, fine, I'm going to win this series. I'm going to win whatever race I can. He can go back to France, and it'll all be history. And that's what's going to happen after the racing here this season. The 500cc title chase is over. Bale will go back to Europe to contest the World Championship Road Race Series. He's retiring from motocross. A good move there. That says, why retire? You've got it all. You've got all of the tools. And he just showed Jeff Stanton that he still has what it takes. Stanton comes right back, though, and passes Bale one more time. They put on an unbelievable duel in some of the nastiest race conditions that we'd seen all year long. The footing here was extremely treacherous. There were big pools of mud, big pools of water, and every inch of the racetrack was extremely slippery. Still, the Honda teammates fought each other every inch of the way. At the end of the day, Jean-Michel Bale had won the overall with a pair of moto wins. Jeff Stanton had You're taken two right. second places. Jean-Michel Bale holds up the trophy, signifying his second ever Don't 250 away, national win, while Jeff Stanton will hold up the number plate, signifying his third 250cc national title. A time to rejoice, a time to be happy, you would think so, yet Jeff Stanton was not. I just had a bad day altogether. I just didn't ride good, so I'm not too happy right now. Tell us about the two motos. Oh, they just went terrible for me. I just didn't ride good. Plain and simple, I got beat. You looking forward to the 500s? Yeah, I am. Just uh, keep driving forward and win all three this year. I've yet to do it, so I'm going to do it this year. Very good. Well, we're looking forward to seeing you on the 500s. Thank you. Let's hear it for Jeff Stanton. Yeah! With barely a rest, Stanton and the rest of the 250 Warriors would turn their attentions toward the 500cc crown. First, a tribute to Jeff Ward. To present you with this plaque, and we love you up here, and I think you guys owe him a big round of applause. Jeff Ward. Jeff Ward, a long and very successful and prosperous career in motocross, was about to come to an end. Five races remained in the 500cc National Championship Series. Ward would ride all of them, then hang it up. His motocross career would be over. In the opening moto, it was Ward's teammate, Jeff Matasevich, rider number nine aboard the Kawasaki that got the whole shot. But Ward, perhaps in response to the swelling ovation from the huge crowd at Washougal, thundered past his teammate to take over the number one position. So Jeff Ward led the pack on the opening lap, the final series of his career at the track that he favored more than any other in the United States. Jeff Stanton was quick to follow suit. He too passed Matasevich, and he set his sights on the fleeing Jeff Ward. At the outset of Jeff Stanton's career, it was thought by most that Stanton was one of the premier 500cc riders in the United States, perhaps in the world. 
but Stanton has yet to win a 500cc national crown. He has won three counting this year's in the 250 class. He has won a pair. In fact, he has won three counting this year's in the Supercross class. But he had never won in the 500cc class. It's the one title he wants more than any other. Jeff Ward, on the other hand, has been a national champion in all forms of AMA national competition. 125cc, 250cc, 500cc, and Supercross. As a matter of fact, Jeff Ward has won each one of the titles on two occasions, with the exception of the 125cc crown. With seven national championships, he has won more national titles than any rider in the history of U.S. motocross. And right now, Jeff Ward looks a long way, a long way from retiring. He's taking the measure of the best in the business, holding Jeff Stanton at bay. Meanwhile, Mike Kudrowski, who is probably the heir apparent to Jeff Ward's throne at Kawasaki, is back in the pack. He's made his way through traffic and is going to make a run at the leaders, although he is quite a ways off the pace at this point. It's still Ward out front. Jeff Stanton with time running out, running in the number two position. Kudrowski is third a long way from the action. Jeff Ward at 31 has been racing professionally for about 16 years. Along the way, he's established uh, quite a pile of records. He's fifth overall in 125 wins. He has 11, 250 wins. He has 13. That's good enough for fourth on that list. 500 CC class, he has 10 wins. Only uh, three other riders have won more than that. He combines Supercross with all of his motocross wins, and he sets at 54. That's third on the all-time career list among all of the riders that have ever participated in motocross and supercross in the U.S. Here he moves over just a little bit. Could be he's getting a slight on the tired side, and uh, Jeff Stanton takes advantage of the situation, finds the line on the inside, and he takes over the number one spot. Stanton waited to do it just as cleanly as he possibly could. Did not want to force the issue with Jeff Ward. Uh, I'll tell you why. I don't think it was uh, for any reason other than respect for Ward's ability. I think he knows that if he messed with Ward, and took him out physically or bodily that Ward would come right back and bounce him off the next burn. Ward has learned a trick or two in his time around the motocross circuit. No two ways about that. So Jeff Stanton takes the first moto. He's followed by Jeff Ward. Kudrowski was third, but Tassimich then Lance Smale. 500cc class, second moto. Let's see how this one shakes out and who wins the overall for the day. It's not going to be Jeff Stanton. Let me put that away for you right now. Instead, it's going to be Mike Kidrowski. He takes the whole shot. He's going to hold that position throughout the moto. He'll take the win. Jeff Ward is going to round out the day with another second place finish. Couple that with the second place that he had in the first moto. He'll be third overall. Stanton finishes third in the second moto, and that will put him at second overall. But Kidrowski wins the opening shot of the season in the 500cc class. From Washougal to Spring Creek Park in Millville, Minnesota. Kendrowski looking for his second consecutive win. This is an extremely rough track. The sands change every time around. And what was a good line just one lap or so ago might be the roughest line on the racetrack by the time you get back around to it. Mike Kendrowski took the early lead. Jeff Ward running in the number two position. And Jeff Stanton was in the number three spot. On the back side of the racetrack, out of sight of cameras, Jeff Ward succumbed to the pressure put on by Stanton. He dropped back to the number three slot as Stanton moved into second and began his quest of catching Mike Kitrowski, who was holding down the number one position. In moto number one, he would not get the job done. Kitrowski is going to hang on to take the win. Stanton will finish in the number two slot. Jean-Michel Bale. The defending 500cc champ will finish third. John Dowd will get a fourth place, and Larry Brooks will round out the top five. Second moto, it was all Jeff Stanton. He took the win. Kidrowski finished second. So once again, the two riders will tie for the day. But Stanton, doing better in the second moto, will be awarded the overall win and overall honors for the day. So after two rounds of 500cc national championship competition, both Kidrowski and Stanton have each won two motos. They each have a second, and they each have a third. Jean-Michel Bale, John Dowd, and Larry Brooks round out the top five finishes at Millville. Round three of the 500cc series, Binghamton, New York, Broom Tioga. It's a different kind of racetrack. Earlier, Jeff Stanton explained. What's the track like? 
track's going to be rough. Um, it's gonna, the rain we had just makes it's going to make it perfect. So it's going to be a demanding race. It's going to be really rough and technical, and uh, you know the best man's going to win today. Well, remarks like those are often bandied about by those that are full of confidence. And Jeff Stanton certainly is confident of his ability here at the Broom Tioga Racetrack in Binghamton, New York. The gate dropped, and Stanton was the first out of the gate to take over the number one position. Right behind him came the big three of the big green, Mike Kidrowski. So it was Stanton and Kidrowski, the points leaders in the 250cc class, showing the rest of the field the short way around this racetrack. They are tied at 92 points apiece in the 500cc National Championship Series. Again, they've each scored a pair of moto wins. They each have a second place, and they each have a third place. This is the first time, though, that the pair of riders have been matched up head-to-head. -head. They've not gone at each other for an entire moto to see who is the best 500cc rider in 1992. Right now, it looks like Stanton deserves that honor. He got the whole shot and has kept Mike Kudrowski at bay. How hard is Kudrowski trying? At this point, we don't have any idea. Take a look at the scores, the standings at this point, and, and no wonder what Mike Kudrowski is thinking, what Jeff Stanton is thinking. Are either one of them or are both of them going at 110%? Is there anything left in reserve? If Kudrowski were to close the gap between him and Stanton, would Stanton have just a little bit left to wheelie away and throw some dirt back in the face of Mike Kudrowski? Jeff Ward running in a number three position would like to catch them both to find out. Jean-Michel Bale is right behind him. So Wardy with just two races left in his illustrious career, making the most of it at here at Broome Tioga. Meanwhile, a rough downhill section. Jeff Stanton paying attention to the racetrack. It's total concentration from here on out. The two riders both vying for the 500cc national title. Neither one of them have ever won that honor. Jeff Stanton has three 250cc titles to his credit and three Supercross crowns. Mike Kudrowski has won a pair of 125 national titles. But the 500cc title is the one that everyone wants. And watch this. Stanton bobbles. He got a little sideways off to that jump. And to keep from running off the track, he hit the brakes. That gave uh, Mike Kudrowski an opportunity to slide by on the inside. Kudrowski wins the moto. Stanton finishes second. Dag Boyson is going to crash here for our entertainment. In the second moto, those two riders finish the same way, first and second. So with a pair of wins, Kudrowski wins the overall for the day. Here's what Stanton thought. I just didn't have, the, have, it, have, it, have it. You know, Mike Kudrowski was riding a hell of a race. Smooth, consistent. Some days you get beat, you just have to suck it up and work a little harder for the next one. So with two races remaining in the 500cc National Championship Series that equates to four motos, Mike Kidrowski takes a six-point lead in the championship standings. Jeff Ward is holding the number three position, followed by Jeff Matasevich, then the top privateer, John Dowd from Chicopee, Massachusetts. Next to last round of the season, it belongs to Delmont, Pennsylvania. Steel City, USA is the racetrack. Yeah, I'd like to win here because then when I go to Bud's Creek, I'd have a 12-point lead, and then I wouldn't, you know, I'd be right there in the point. Stan could win both motos, and I'd still be in good shape to win the championship. So I, I'm, gonna, I'm here to win, and that's what I came here to do, so I'm going to give it all I got. I would have to tell you that that same sentiment was running through the team on the pit in the person of Jeff Stanton, and I would think that Jeff Ward and Mike Bale, Jean-Michel Bale rather, Mike Jones, Todd DeHoop, a lot of other riders were thinking the same thought. Big pile up in the first corner in that 500cc class. There were riders all over the place, but all of the good ones escaped unscathed. Taking the whole shot was Jean-Michel Bale. He's followed by Mike Jones. There's Mike Kudrowski running in the number three position. Jeff Stanton running in the number four slot, and there's Jeff Ward running fifth. Usually it's hard to catch Jean-Michel Bale when he's out front, but not when Jean-Michel Bale cooperates. But even when he crashes, he does it gracefully. He was back up just as quick as anyone possibly should be, but Mike Kudrowski was able to sneak by to take over the number one position in the first moto. So the running order now is Kudrowski out front, Jean-Michel Bale running in the number two position. Jeff Stanton is back in third, fourth place, the property of Jeff Moore. 
Now, if it's anything that Jean-Michel Vail hates, it's being embarrassed in front of his friends. And Jean-Michel Vail hates it when he crashes, and he is bad, especially for the lead. So Vail has the pressure on Mike Kidrowski, but Kidrowski refuses to crack. He's looking for as many points as possible out of this one, because the more he gets, the less he has to worry about at the season finale. If he could win a pair of motos here today, then uh, he would be in excellent shape to capture the crown with only a couple of motos to go. So Kowalski pure concentration 100% of the way at this Steel City track. Behind Kowalski and Vale, there were a couple of other riders that were doing just a little bit of business. That would be Jeff Stanton and Jeff Ward. Wardy got by Stanton, and Ward will end up in the number three position at the checkered flag. And the checkers are coming out. Kedrowski wins it. John michelle Bale finishes second. Ward third. Stanton fourth. Todd DeHoot finishes in the number five position. So let's flash ahead to the end of moto number two. The big number six on the motorcycle. Jeff Ward pumps his arm. He won the moto. He won the overall honors for the day. It gets no better than that. Jeff Ward putting one more in the record book. Here's what he had to say. Does it make you uh, uh, think twice about uh, retiring? No, you know, I still know what it takes to, to win. And I've, I've uh, put in everything I had this year. It just wasn't coming together as easy. And you can tell when it's, it's getting, you know, you're struggling. And I've been struggling. And I just don't want to prolong and tarnish my name as, you know, just keep getting worse and worse. So I think it's really good for me to win and, just, you know, just step out with some pride. <laughs> right. Pride? Jeff Ward has plenty of it. And he goes out in style. The season finale, Bud's Creek, Maryland at Bud's Creek Cycle Park. The final round of the 500cc National Championship Series. 11 points separate Mike Kudrowski and Jeff Stanton. What that equates to is this. If Stanton wins both motos today, in order for him to win the championship, Kudrowski would have to take at least one-third and one-fourth. If Kudrowski takes two-third places, then it's all over. That's all he needs to seal the title the way he's been riding. That should be a snap. Jeff Stanton out front in the early going. John michelle Vale running second. Jeff Ward is third, and Mike Kidrowski is fourth. So the way the positions are stacked up right now, that is exactly the combination that Jeff Stanton needs in one moto in order for uh, him to win the championship. Now, theoretically, if teamwork is going to be at play here, jean michelle Bale would have stayed behind Jeff Stanton, but there is no love, as we told you earlier, lost between these two riders, and Bale flashes by Stanton to take over the number one position. I assure you that behind them, should the Mike Kidrowski need that spot that Jeff Ward has, Ward would readily move over and give it up. In fact, he has already done just that. He has dropped back off the pace to let Mike Kidrowski go and seek his fortune up front. While the fans look on and cheer, we're not sure who. We think it's just because they like to be on camera. Or maybe they were cheering that pass that Jeff Stanton put on Jean-Michel Bale. Stanton back in front, Bale running second. There's Kidrowski in third. As long as he holds on to that third place, then he has the championship locked up, provided, of course, he can do it in the second moto. Jeff Ward just watching what is happening back in the number four position. Now coming up, oddity number two in this moto of the 500cc championship. Oddity number one, of course, was when Jean-Michel Bale passed Stanton. And oddity number two was when Bale moved over and let Kitkowski pass uh, to take over the number two position. Told you there was no love lost between the Honda teammates. Second moto, rain is coming down. Track is a quagmire. Doesn't matter. Stanton is going to win overall honors for the day. Kedrowski finishes third in the moto. More importantly, Kedrowski wins the title. Here he is. Pretty tough day. You know, I got a second the first moto. I just started raining. And then the second moto was just a mud bog out there. And uh, I had a pretty good start. And then I fell twice. And I was back in the pack and didn't know things were going to come together. But I just kept my cool. And I'm happy I got second and won the championship. And with that, the 1992 American Motorcyclist Association National Championship Motocross Series comes to an end. Jeff Emig was crowned the 125cc champ, Jeff Stanton won the 250 crown, and Mike Kudrowski won the 500cc title. We hope you've enjoyed this look back at 1992. We'll see you again next year.